Hello everyone, in this lecture today I'm going to talk to you about epigenetics. So first I'm going to talk about what is epigenetics. If you have a look at this, this word uh, very closely, this, this word consists of two words, that is epi plus genetics. The meaning of epi is above or on top of. So basically the literal meaning of epigenetics is above or on top of the genetics. Uh, you already know what is genetics. If you don't know, please refer to my previous videos. Okay, so epigenetics is above or on top of genetics. That this is the literal meaning. So what is it actually? What is its definition? That's the definition of epigenetics is this, that it refers to the external modification uh, to DNA that turn genes on or off. Okay, so it's external modifications that occur to the DNA that turns gene, genes on or off. They, that's, that's epigenetics. And these modifications, they do not change the DNA sequence. Okay, very important thing that you, you should know. Okay, these modifications, these epigenetic modifications, they do not change the DNA sequence. But what they do, they affect how the, how the cells are, the cells read the genes. Okay, the, the DNA sequence is not changed, but something, some other change happens. And that, that other modifications to the DNA happens, and that modification is called epigenetics. Okay? So epigenetics, uh, the because of the epigenetics, some genes are turned on, some genes are turned off. So this is how the gene, the gene regulation is affected. Okay, so now that I have covered what is epigenetics, the two, two most common forms of epigenetics mechanism, they are DNA methylation and histone modification. Okay, DNA methylation and histone modifications, these are the two, two major uh, examples of uh, epigenetics. So how and what are the different uh, factors that affect the epigenetic mechanisms, that is both DNA methylation and histone modifications? These factors um, are affected by several, these mechanisms, sorry, these epigenetic mechanisms are affected by several factors and also the body processes. For example, development in the uterus, in childhood development stages, these days that also affects epigenetic mechanisms and environmental chemicals because they affect epigenetic mechanisms, drugs and pharmaceuticals because we take these, these also affects epigenetic mechanisms aging, okay? So, I mean, uh, from from childhood to adulthood to the elderly, you know, this, the, the, the epigenetic mechanisms are affected differently. And also, last but not least, diet. Diet is also a major factor that, that affects epigenetic mechanisms. So, these are some of the factors that affect epigenetic mechanisms or some processes, okay? So, that you should remember. Good. Now that I have talked about what are the different factors that have, or the processes that affect epigenetic mechanisms, now I'm going to talk about what is DNA methylation. Okay, what is DNA methylation? DNA methylation is the addition of a methyl group, okay, or a chemical cap to the part of the DNA molecule which prevents certain genes from being expressed. Okay, so this is DNA methylation. DNA methylation is that addition of a methyl group to the DNA. Okay, the name is very clear, the definition is also as the name suggests, the addition of a methyl group or to the DNA molecule. And so what happens when this DNA methyl group is added to the DNA molecule? This will actually prevent genes from being expressed. Okay, so I'm going to give you, uh, uh, now I want you to have a look at this picture here. Okay, so this is the chromosome and this is chromatin. So um, we have a chromosome and this is chromatin. And what happens is that when the methyl group, okay, this is an epigenetic factor, this is a methyl group, when this methyl group is added to the DNA, okay, so when this methyl group is added to the DNA, then what 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 would happen? Then this methyl group can uh, some not only the not only the in some cases it can activate or in some cases it can repress the genes. This is how it regulates gene expression, okay? So basically DNA is added. DNA methyl group is added uh, to the DNA molecule, and that can result that can result in activation or the repression of the genes. Okay, so this is DNA methylation, right? It's a epigenetic factor, and from where this methyl group can be found? Okay, for example, we eat some food. The food from the food, this factor can come. Okay, one example is that from dietary sources, right? So now I have talked about what is DNA methylation. DNA methylation is a type of epigenetic modification. In these, the methyl group is added to the DNA molecule. 
this is the DNA molecule and when the methyl group is added to the DNA molecule what will happen is that this epigenetic factor this this can activate DNA or uh, so activate some activate or repress repress okay activate or repress some genes good so so then how are we going to know that which uh, is a DNA is methylated or non unmethylated you know to check the DNA methylation the, the very one of the most commonly used method, super popular method, is a bisulfide sequencing method. Okay, so what is this method that I'm going to discuss? In in bisulfide sequencing method, we treat both uh, the, the the DNA, the sample, you know, unmethylated, or it can be methylated with what sodium hydroxide and sodium bisulfide. That's why it's called bisulfide treatment. So if this is unmethylated DNA after the bisulfide treatment, so what will happen is that this cytosine Will be converted into uracil okay very very important concept you should know okay cytosine will be converted to uracil okay so <clears throat> this is the final dna so then in case of unmethylated dna after the bisulfide treatment cytosine unmethylated dna means what unmethylated cytosine okay if the, if the cytosine is unmethylated then this will be converted into uracil after bisulfide treatment okay but if the if the cytosine is methylated or the dna is methylated DNA is methylated, means the methylation occurs especially in the cytosine molecule. So if it is methylated, we, we make the bisulfide treatment, but this will not be this this cytosine, methylated cytosine is not converted to uracil. Okay. So methylated cytosine it remains the same. It is not converted to the uracil. Okay. So this is how we will be able to distinguish if the DNA or, or if and where the methylation has occurred. Okay. So if on in case of on methylation, Cytosine will be converted into uracil. In case of methylated cytosine or the methylated DNA, then in that case, in that case, DNA is methylated when methyl, methyl group is added in cytosine molecule. And so in that case, this will remain same. So methylated cytosine can, is, is not converted into um, in uracil. Okay, it remains same even after this sodium hydroxide and sodium bisulfide treatment. Okay, so this is one method uh, to detect uh, the DNA methylation. Okay. This is bisulfide sequencing. So now I have covered what is uh, DNA methylation. In this slide, I want to talk. I want to talk to you about histone modification. This is another really important mechanism or the process process of uh, epigenetics. So in, in histone modification, what happens in histone modification? What happens is that these histones. What are histones first? Histones are the proteins that 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 of, of, I mean that DNA wraps around. So I mean the, these are the proteins. Okay. So what are histones? Okay. Look look at here. Okay. DNA is a long long. It's a long molecule. It's several several hundred meter long. But such a such a long DNA cannot be incorporated into the small cell. So therefore the coiling and supercoiling of this molecule occurs wrapping of these molecule occurs around around these histone proteins okay histones are the proteins around which dna can wind for compaction and gene regulation so these are the histone proteins okay so without histones dna would be too long to fit inside the cells right so that's why there is a need of histones okay so now histones what are histones these are the proteins around which dna wraps around okay so this is this is histone okay this is histone protein okay so around which the dna has wrapped around all right so if histones squeeze DNA tightly, so that means that if the histones, they, they are squeezing the DNA very, very tightly, then DNA cannot be read by the cell, okay? The modifications that relax the histones can make the DNA accessible uh, to proteins that read the gene. So basically, if, if there is some modifications that occurs and that actually results in the tight compaction and, and that results in DNA accessible, in that case, gene will be inactive because transcription factors they cannot access these genes okay but if the if, if okay if some some epigenetic factor comes and binds to the histone tail where this binding occurs to the histone tail histone modification what is histone modification histone modification is the binding of epigenetic factors to histone tails okay so if this is an epigenetic factor it binds to the histone tail and then now the histone has been modified that's why it's called histone modification because there is modification some Histone occurs because of, of the binding of some uh, some epigenetic factors that alters to which the DNA is uh, that also alters uh, the extent to which DNA is wrapped around histones, right? 
and of and the availability of genes in the DNA to be activated. Okay, if this factor binds to the histone tail, and if this is loose, okay, if this is loose, then the DN the genes are accessible and they can be transcribed. But if this is very tight compaction or binding of these epigenetic factors, then the DNA inaccessible. In non, for example, here histone tail, nothing has bound DNA accessible. Okay, this 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 is gene is active. Okay, so it is active, but epigenetic factors bind, so that makes it uh, DNA inaccessible. Why? Because uh, DNA inaccessible, it, it has now wrapped around here. You see, DNA inaccessible gene is inactive. In this case, gene is in this case here gene is active. In this case here gene is inactive. Okay, so. The, this this is called histone modification because of the some changes that occurs in the histone tail by some epigenetic factors that also determines if the gene will be expressed or it will not be expressed okay so this is called histone modification right so now i have talked about what is histone modifications finally i want to talk to you about the endpoints of epigenetics cancer autoimmune disease mental disorders diabetes etc these are some some diseases that occur say the results of uh, epigenetics okay not only these some modifications all both DNA methylations and some modifications both okay so finally before i before i wrap up i just want to give you uh, the summary the summary is that uh, in case of dna methylation methyl group is added to the dna and that can actually activate or replace genes. Okay, whereas in case of histone modifications, histone, histone protein tail, you know, in, in that epigenetic factor binds, and hence the protein now has been modified, and this will actually affect, okay, um, the extent to which DNA will be wrapped around the histones and the availability of genes in the DNA to be activated. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you very much for your kind attention.